Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Branislava as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. We'd like to extend a special welcome to any visitors we might have with us today. If you'll please stand and join me in singing, Come Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. How I've been waiting to hear a response <laughs> like that. So <laughs> thank you all for being here as we resume our first public mass here at St. Branislava Parish. Uh, we're so glad that you're here with us this afternoon, especially as we celebrate this beautiful feast of Pentecost the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. And so we pray that today, as we and many parishes around our diocese and around the country uh, resume the celebration of public mass, that this may be a rebirth for the church in our land. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you suffered on the cross, stretching out your arms in an everlasting sign of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us the Holy Spirit, the spirit of healing and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We pray
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time came for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there from the sky, a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled and proclaimed. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd. They were confused because each one of them heard speaking in his own language. They were astounded in amazement and they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in our native language? We are Parthenons, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send out your spirit. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one that has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we all were given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose ever sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose, ever, whose sins you are retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. All in one place together. In all my years of preaching, I don't think I've paid much attention to those opening words of today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But today, they take on a special significance as we begin cautiously and prudently to resume the public celebration of Sunday Mass. After our weeks of physical separation from one another, today we begin to return to being all together in one place. Now, of course, if you look around, it's obvious we're not all here. With good cause, many continue to remain at home because of advanced age or health or other good reasons. We want to hold them close in our hearts this afternoon. But some of us are here, and that is a hopeful sign, a joyful symbol of what church means. Because the church is not a physical building. The Greek word for church, ekklesia, means an assembly, a gathering of people together, all in one place. One of the most heartwarming things for me as a pastor during these last couple of months has been listening to parishioners share with me how much they miss being able to come together as a parish family here at church to be physically with their brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, they miss the Eucharist. That goes without saying. But just as much, they miss the community. And that is heartwarming for me to hear because it shows that many of you have come to understand that the Eucharist is not a commodity. It's not something we come here to get or have some kind of right to. No, the Eucharist is not a commodity, but a communion. A communion with the Lord and with one another. It's a package deal. You can't have one without the other. There is no such thing as a solitary Christian. The church is all of us together, most especially here, when we are gathered together around this altar. Now be warned, there's always a risk involved in being the ecclesia, the gathered assembly of the church. I recently read somewhere that the Mass, by its very nature, is contagious. 
The writer, of course, was speaking of the pandemic and how much of what we normally do at Mass can facilitate the transmission of disease. That's why we're taking all these precautions. That's why we're changing what we do and how we do it. Because we have a moral responsibility to care for each other, to protect one another, especially those who are most vulnerable. You and I may not perhaps like all the restrictions placed upon us. They may even seem burdensome. But charity demands that we accept them because the Mass, by its very nature, is contagious. But there is another type of contagion that's spread at Mass when we are all together in one place. It's a spiritual contagion. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In the Acts of the Apostles today, the Holy Spirit spreads like wildfire, tongues of flame leaping from head to head. In John's Gospel, it's the image of Jesus breathing in the faces of his apostles, infecting them with the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to forgive sins in his name. To say that the Mass, by its very nature, is contagious is not just about a virus. It's about the transmission of the Holy Spirit. It's about receiving power from on high. I don't think we as Catholics fully appreciate how ferocious the contagion of the Spirit can be, how the Spirit can infect a community of disciples, even a small gathering like this one, and set those disciples on fire. You and I should be walking out of here each week with a fever, with a fervor of love for God and neighbor. I know some parishes are taking people's temperatures as they enter church. I think we should be checking your temperature as you leave church just to be sure that you've caught the Holy Spirit, that you leave here on fire. One of my favorite American writers, Annie Dillard, has this to say about coming to church. She asks, does anyone have the foggiest idea what sort of power we so blithely invoke? The churches are children playing on the floor with their chemistry sets, mixing up a batch of TNT to kill a Sunday morning. We should all be wearing crash helmets. Ushers should issue life preservers and signal flares. They should lash us to our pews makes all of our precautionary measures seem kind of lame, doesn't it? But that's the explosive power of the Holy Spirit, a power that is fast spreading, especially when we are all gathered in one place together, just as at that first Pentecost. And the symptoms of that spiritual contagion are many. But I think the most important one is passion. Today we're vested in red, the color of fire, the color of passion. The Holy Spirit fills us with passion. So if you're passionate about evangelizing, about bringing souls to Jesus Christ, you've caught the Spirit. If you are passionate about justice for the poor and the oppressed and the marginalized, you have caught the Spirit. If you are passionate about defending human life and human dignity, if you're passionate about caring for the earth, our common home, you have caught the Spirit. But above all, especially right now, if you are passionate about unity, you've caught the Spirit. Because we so need unity in the face of so much division and acrimony and chaos 
in our society. And that's the most important thing the Spirit does. He unites people. He overcomes the gap that divides us from one another and brings people together. We see this today in the Acts of the Apostles as the Spirit enables the Apostles to speak in different languages so that everyone, no matter where they are from, can understand the good news they proclaim. We see it in 1 Corinthians today as Paul reminds us that we are baptized into one body so that there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free persons, but all are one in Christ. We see it in the Gospel of John as Jesus bestows the Spirit so that the apostles can heal the wound of sin which by its very nature divides and separates people and reconcile people to God and to one another. So brothers and sisters, here we all are, together in one place on the great feast of Pentecost. And I hope we all get infected today. Not, of course, with a potentially lethal virus, but with the Spirit who gives life and breath. I pray that you and I might be filled with that Spirit and leave here on fire, full of that passion for unity that only the Spirit can bring about. And I pray that you might go forth from here and contaminate everyone you come into contact with this week, spreading healing and reconciliation, compassion, and mutual respect wherever you go. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Amen. Profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The love of God has been poured forth into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Made bold by the same Spirit, we bring our prayers before the Father. For the Church, the body of Christ, may the Holy Spirit deepen our communion with one another in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. For the unity and peace of all humankind, may the fire of the Holy Spirit purify our hearts in all racism, violence, and division, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may God grant them healing, strength, and the consolation of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are graduating from high school, college, or university, may the Holy Spirit be their advocate and guide as they step forward into the future with faith, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Tim Odenhaven, who is celebrating his 10th anniversary of priestly ordination. And for Father Ed, who recently celebrated his 30th anniversary. May the Holy Spirit fill them with his gifts and make their ministry fruitful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those remembered at Masses this weekend. John Schluter, Leonard Sankey, Gerald Courtney, and the deceased members of the Gollan and Brzezinski families. Having shared in Christ's death, may they be raised to life in the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, ignite our hearts with the fire of your Holy Spirit and make us burn with love for you and for one another that we may experience the peace and the joy which the risen Lord offers us. Receive the prayers we offer now in his name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us into all truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, 
as they are claimed. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. amen. 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please listen carefully to the directions for Holy, Com Holy Communion. They're given to safeguard everyone's health. All are asked to come forward in the procession, even if you are not receiving Holy Communion. If not receiving, cross your arms over your chest or simply uh, pass by the minister. An usher will let you out of your pew row by row, beginning at the back of the church and working our way to the front. Lines will be single file only, so please follow the usher's directions. And also maintain a six foot distance between yourself and the person ahead of you in line. We respectfully ask that everyone receive Holy Communion in the hand. When approaching the Minister of Communion, Please extend your arms fully to keep as much distance between you and the minister as possible. Lower your mask, respond amen, consume the host in front of the minister, then return your mask and then return to your seat. If the minister inadvertently makes physical contact with a communicant or if a communicant receives on the tongue, he will stop purify his fingers and sanitize his hands before resuming the distribution of Holy Communion. And finally, we ask that after receiving Communion, you return to your seat and remain there until the conclusion of Mass.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of brief announcements before we conclude. Some things never change. Uh, in your charity, if you would please pray for the eternal repose of Judith Goligoski and Dale O'Brien, who both passed away recently. Please keep them and their families in your prayers this week. A special thank you to all our many volunteers who have made it possible for us to safely resume the celebration of public, uh, public celebration of Mass. Without their help, uh, the doors would have to remain closed. So thank you to all our volunteers. We do ask that you remain in your seats after the conclusion of Mass so that the ushers can dismiss you in an orderly fashion. You're asked to please maintain social distancing as you leave and go directly to your vehicles. Unfortunately, there is to be no socializing in the gathering space. We thank you for your cooperation with all these necessary safeguards and for your understanding and charity as we all adjust to them. Let's all continue to pray for one another, for our nation, and for our world during this very challenging time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.